Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this picture. This high key image makes use of selective focus to draw the viewer into the center of the picture. Limiting the depth of field with a wide aperture makes this sort of image possible. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. OK, so this is the subject. Uh, and this is a piece of uh, blackthorn, which I've cut from the hedge. And uh, what are we going to try and do is just focus on this part right in the center here. So I'm going to try and get all the rest of it, more or less, out of focus to one degree or another. OK, so in the original image that I showed at the beginning of the video, the background was white. And that was formed by this four foot by six foot softbox on the front of a Profoto D2 flash head. OK, so I'll just spin that round into something like position. There. So the next thing to consider would be uh, the camera. And I'm using this full frame digital SLR with this time an 85 millimeter f1.2 lens on the front of it. Now I've picked that on purpose because it will allow me to have an extremely small depth of field. OK, let's pop this on the tripod like that. And I'll turn the camera on. There we go. So we can see that the software here has recognized the camera. Uh, it's in full manual mode. At the moment, the settings on the camera, I have a shutter speed of 1 250th of a second, which is the normal flash sync speed for that camera, uh, ISO 100, and an aperture of f8. Now, at f8, I'm not going to get anything like um, a, a narrow depth of field. So the first thing I'm going to do is change this from f8 to, initially anyway, um, f2, like that. Now, with these settings, what I'll do is just grab a test image, and we'll just see what we can uh, get with the house lights. And there we are. You can see that there's quite a lot of uh, contamination, uh, and the focus point isn't in the right place yet. So one of the first things I want to do, then, is put the focus point in the right place, in the middle. And for that, what I'm going to do is use um, Live View. So if I just click on the Live View here, like that. Now, the lens that's on the camera, as I mentioned, is an 85mm 1.2. Uh, and one of the things about that lens is that it uses an electronic focusing mechanism, which allows me to use the uh, focus controls within Live View here to set the focus point. So if I just click on here, for instance, you should be able to see that uh, what is happening is the lens is moving and allowing me to refocus the image. There we go. So it's this bit in the middle that I'm actually interested in. So what I'm going to do is just zoom in a little bit just onto that part. So I'll just click on the zoom function here. Just bring that down, like that. And now I can use the focus controls to finally ad adjust it, like this, until it's in focus, like so. OK, so I think that's about right. Let's just zoom back out again. Yes, that looks OK. So having done that, I can now get rid of uh, Live View and I'll grab another image just with the house lights, just so you can uh, see what difference that's made. There. So now this is the part which is in focus and we've got varying degrees of out of focus bits of branch everywhere else, which is what we want. So the other thing to address uh, would be the uh, amount of contamination that I'm getting from the house lights. 
Now I could just turn the house lights out, uh, but if I did that, then I'd be working completely in the dark and um, that's generally not a good thing. So another way around that would be to use high speed sync. Now the, uh, the flash units that I'm using uh, are all capable of high speed sync. So what I can do is change the shutter speed here from the sync speed of that camera to something a bit higher. So if I pick, for instance, um, one two thousandth of a second instead of one two hundred and fiftieth of a second and grab an image now, now you can see that the image is virtually completely black, which is what we want. OK, so with this set, what I'll do now is turn on the flash at the back and we'll have a test image. And just at an arbitrary energy level, we'll grab an image. There, and that's giving me the sort of thing that I want. So the background here has gone almost completely white. So what I'll do is just turn the exposure warning on and you can see from this the red areas are just going into clipping. And I think that's fine. Good. So with that uh, exposure set, the next thing to do would be to put some light on the plant itself. So for that, I'm going to use another D2, this time with a one foot by four foot uh, strip box on the front of it. So I'm just going to line this up, more or less with the plant, like so. I'll take that up in the air a little to about here. So with that in more or less the right place, possibly, what I'll do is I'll turn off the light at the back. So I'll just select that light, turn that head off, and I'll select this light, this one here, and turn that one on, and we'll just grab a test image. OK, so you can see from that test image that it's a little low in exposure. So I'm just going to add uh, what, two stops to that, just as a starting point. There we go. And we'll just grab that again. There we are. That's looking a bit brighter. Uh, again, I'll just use the exposure warning. And I'm getting some clipping on these bits. Um, so what I might do is just take uh, maybe half a stop off that. So I'll just reduce the energy by half a stop. There we go, just grab that again. Once again, I'll just use the exposure warning. Yeah, that's come down quite nicely, I think. So now, I'll just turn the backlight back on again. So I'll just choose that head, like so. And we'll fire them both together. OK, so I think as far as exposure is concerned, that is almost there. Uh, I'd just like to do a little bit of fill uh, on the side here. Just a bit of attention to detail, really. So what I'm going to do is just put a reflector just in here, just to recycle uh, some of the light back onto this side. There we go. So I'm just going to use this piece of card as a reflector. I'm going to get it in here fairly tight, something like that. I'll just check in the viewfinder that that isn't actually in the picture. No, nope, that looks OK. So with that in position, we'll give it another go. Excellent. That's the sort of thing I wanted. So this is what we had before I put the card in. And this is what I've got now. You should be able to see that uh, all these sides are now filled in quite nicely. So I've got the part of the picture that I want in focus in the center, and everything else is going out of focus either side. OK, so as far as capturing the image is concerned, that's it. OK, so with that done, the next thing to do would be to go into Photoshop and do the post-production. OK, so here we are in Photoshop. 
and I've loaded up the image that I captured earlier. So the first thing I want to do is just make a copy of this image and the way that I usually do that is just go onto the layer here, right click the mouse, ask for a duplicate layer, but make it a new document. And we'll just call that Blackthorn. OK, so that's made me a new file at the top here, so I can dispense with the camera original. OK, so there isn't a great deal to do to this image, but I do want to just make it a bit more dreamlike. And one of the ways that you can do that is just by um, adding another layer uh, with a solid colour in it. So if I just come down here and add a layer, so this has made me a new layer on the top here, and what I'm going to do is fill this layer with pure white. So just making sure that white is selected as the foreground colour. Just go to the paint bucket and fill that with white, like so. Now having done that, what I can do now is just take the opacity of that layer down a bit. So if I now bring that down to, say, 30, 40, let's go for 40, something like that. Uh, and now what I want to do with this uh, is just add a mask to that so that I can now make the centre of that clear again. But all the outside will still have this uh, dreamy white tinge to it. OK, so again, just making sure that the foreground colour is black. I'll just grab a paintbrush. This time I'm going to grab a large paintbrush, something like that, and we'll just punch in the middle, like so. There we are, that's the sort of thing that I want. So you can see, if I now turn this on and off, the difference that's made. There we go. Now because it's on another layer, um, I can change the opacity now. So if I wanted that uh, effect to be a bit more dominant, I can just take the opacity up and it will bring the white back into the fore. Something like that. Maybe around about 60 odd looks about right. There we are. So that's without it and that's with it. Excellent. So finally it's just a case of uh, cropping it down and because I'm going to be using this for video, I'm just going to use 16 by 9. And I think that's fine exactly as it is. So I'm just going to click on the commit button at the top here. And there we have it. So that's a delightfully simple high key image with a very limited depth of field, which draws the attention of the viewer into the center of the picture, which is what you want. And I'm very pleased with the way that that's come out. OK, so I hope you liked watching how I made that image. And if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear. And don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and hit the like button. Thank you very much for watching.